So we get into the word today. I'll be teaching on counterfeit faith. When we see the word counterfeit, it means fake. Fake. And um, I want to speak, we're, we're, we're going to be as practical as possible. If somebody gives you money hmm, and you flip it, and at the back of that naira, let's say the person gives you a thousand naira, and at the back of the thousand naira note, you find out that it's blank or it's just, it's just looking, it's not just looking like 1,000 naira notes. That money is what? Counterfeit. So even though one side of it looks like, so you might have even received the money and you, you went home and you're excited that you have 1,000 naira notes. It may be when you wanted to now use it to buy something that the person will receive the money from you now say, no, this money is fake. That money, does it still have the ability to be tendered for exchange of goods? No. Why? At least since it's half of it that doesn't look right, we should be able to say that that 1,000 Naira that is half of it, we should be able to get 500 Naira value from it. But no. That money is what? Counterfeit and useless. So, the same thing with faith. There are different sides of faith that needs to come together for your faith to be able to make transactions in the spirit realm. Praise God. There are what? Different sides of faith that need to be combined for it to now become something that you can tender and you can now use it to make transactions. Don't forget, faith is how we receive from God. Faith is how we please God. And we've looked at it for two weeks that, you know, faith first is used for us believing that God exists. The second one, you know, you've not seen God before. Or is there anybody in this room that has seen God before? But we all believe that God exists. The reason why you can believe that is a release of your faith. Praise God. Because we are naturally logical beings. It's what you see that you want to believe. But you have not seen God before. But you believe that He exists. Good. That's the first part. The second part of faith is now to use it to please God. Amen. To use it to please God. And in this pleasing God, there are many things that are going to, that are inside of pleasing God. Many things. And no matter what vision God's, God is going to give to you, you will need faith. If that vision right now, you know how it's going to happen and you can do it by your power, it's not God that gave you that vision. Praise God. It's not what? It's not God that gave you that vision. If you can do it by yourself, you just thought of something that you can undo. But if it's God that gives you a vision, it's, it's going to be a vision that will take supernatural help. And to receive supernatural help, you will need faith. So, we're going to talk about three sides of faith, but two sides first. The same way the Naira note has the front and the back, or a coin has head and tail. If one is not there, you cannot use it to purchase anything. So, what are the sides of faith? Two, three majorly, but I will mention two first, then we'll talk about the third one. The first one is heart faith. Say heart faith. The second one is speech faith. Say speech faith. Heart faith and what? Speech. So the head is heart. The tail is what? Speech. If the two are not in place, if you only believe it in your heart and you are not saying it with your mouth, you cannot make the transaction. A lot of people believe things that they have not said. In short, God made man another speaking being. God made man what? Another speaking being. So God made man in his image and in his likeness. And if we study God's oppression, then we'll be able to find out how we should operate. So in the beginning, in the book of Genesis, we see it clearly. God, in the beginning, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and what? It was void. What did God do? It's clear that God thought about it. Which means that he thought about what he wanted to do. But did he stop at thinking about it? That's where most people stop. So they think that because they've thought about it, it's going to happen. Mm -mm. God thought about it. And don't you think that God's thought enough should have caused it to happen? So why did God speak? Then 
That's the speaking part. But why did the Spirit also move before God spoke? So the Spirit of God moved and then God what? Spoke and said, let there be light. And there was what? Light. It was not what God thought that happened. It was what God said. It was what God did what? What he said. So, the Bible is written so that it can be said. The word of God is written so that it can be spoken. In short, that's why the Bible says that the letter kill it. What mixes life with the letter is breath. Hallelujah. It's the breath of God. If a person wants to start engaging the word, reading it alone will not do the, do the work. You read it, it will enter your mind. Then the transformation is happening. But you have to say it. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I can't just be Christian in my heart. My speech must show. It says, out of the abundance of the heart, the, the, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth does what? Speak it. Which means that there's something on the inside. Then your mouth must give expression to it. Once you do that, you have completed the cycle. But that's just like the two first part. Let me give an example of counterfeit faith. Of because there are people who, ex, who exercised it, and we have a story in the Bible like that. I want us to open to the book of Acts. Book of Acts, quickly, chapter 19. We, have been, we, we, we finished the book of Acts on what day? For those who have been following, amen. Amen. For, for those, we have been doing Bible study in our, in, in our stream. And this year we have done the book of John and we have done the book of Acts just in one month. Praise God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Uh, can the hallelujah of those who have been following be more? Hallelujah. Uh-huh. hallelujah. Amen. Acts 19, verse 13 to 16. Acts 19. I want to show you an example of counterfeit faith to let you know that if it's not complete, it's not a legal tender in the spirit realm. It's not something that you can use to make any transaction. It says, a group of Jews was traveling from town to town, casting out evil spirits. They tried to use the name of the Lord Jesus in their incantation. See, when somebody is using the name of Jesus, you are either using it or not. So the fact that they even put that they tried, it means that there's something wrong already. So you either use the name of Jesus or you don't. Praise God. So they tried to use the name of Jesus in their incantation. They called it incantation. Saying, I command you in the name of Jesus. Whom Paul preaches another problem. (laughs) Their faith is not authentic. (laughs) <laughs> praise God whom Paul preaches to come out so they now gave us an example of those who were doing this kind of, it says seven sons of Sceva a leading priest were doing this were doing this but one time when they tried it one time say one time the evil spirit replied I know Jesus and I know Paul but who are you See, situations in life respond. If you have been living based on the faith of your pastor or your parents, it's time to know God for yourself so that you can show up in the radar in the spirit. Amen. Then now said, then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house naked and battered. That evil spirit is a, weak, is a very wicked evil spirit. But what do we see here? We see counterfeit faith. These guys had something that looked like mouth faith, speech faith. But there was something wrong with their heart faith. Because in their speech, we recognize what's inside their heart. Amen. That's why, see, once somebody says something, you can tell what's really inside. What's really inside. They said, come out in the name of Jesus that who Paul preaches. There's nothing in their heart. 
They saw Paul cast out devils and they wanted to do the same. They, they saw Paul do what? Cast out devils. They wanted to do the same. That's why in the kingdom, you don't copy what people do without hearing what they heard. Amen. Somebody just did something. You two now go and do it. And you didn't hear what they heard. They did it because they heard something. In the book of Galatians, it tells us, those that do miracles in your midst, how do they do it? By the work of the law, by the hearing of faith, they heard something that made them move in that direction. Praise God. Two singers can be here and they will sing amazing grace. One, very nice voice. The other may be a cracked, crooked voice that heard something. That did what? Heard something. The other came with skill and dexterity and riffs. The other person, the voice may not be that good, but the person that heard something. The person can carry it to you. He's not singing off key. You understand what I'm saying? Off key will distract. Very important. Don't just say, uh, uh, because don't forget that you are relating with men. If you are singing to God, oh, God sees your heart. Don't have a problem with that. But you are going to minister to men. And you want them to participate or be blessed. Off key, we'll close our ears. So it may be powerful, but we won't know. Praise God. So the person can carry a tune. Not, the voice may not have that finesse that this other voice has. But the person heard something. The person has a revelation of what grace is. The two people will sing. But the result will be different. The lyrics of the song, the same. But the impact will be different. They heard something. And that's why you have to secure the voice of God. That's the most important asset. You have to secure a relationship with the Holy Ghost. It changes everything. What did you hear? There are things that God told me today that I'm expecting. It set, helps me set my expectation. Let me tell you something. I as a person personally, I don't like to be disappointed. So, I don't trust men like I trust God. See, when we use the word trust, we use it generic, in a generic way, I trust the Lord, so you tell the person to I trust you. Mm-mm. It's because English language doesn't have any other, in, any other word that we should have used to classify our trust for God and our trust for you. You are man, you can fail. So, because I don't like disappointments, My trust in God is the key. Men, mm -mm, they can feel, they have limitations. Somebody can tell you, I'm coming to your office tomorrow. I will just say yes until you show up. (laughs) Before I believe that you are here. When you are here, you are here. So I don't even make plans with what you say. Oh, John, you know these things now. Even when we fix sessions, I have other things that if you don't show up, that I will be doing. I will never be caught I do. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? So, our heart condition is extremely important. So, these sons of Skiva, they had what? Something that looked like mouth fit. But it was revealed in what they said that they didn't have it inside of them. They didn't eat that thing. They saw somebody else do something. They practiced the same thing. So, see, everything we read in the word of God, you have to eat it. You have, you, you have to do what? The Bible says, we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall what? And they shall recover. Abi, have you laid hands before and the person did not recover? Have you had moments where you prayed for somebody and it did not happen? But let's be truthful. Yes, Abi. Uh-huh. See, that sincerity, God needs it for us to have it. Hmm? That your friend would pray for somebody and you too, you pray for the person. You pray for somebody else. And your friend got results, you didn't get results. It's to challenge you spiritually. Don't let it go. Most people let it go. I say, maybe it's not God's will. Maybe the kind of anointing God gave me is not the one that... But the Bible says you lay hands on the sick and they will recover. What are you supposed to go and do? You're supposed to go back to God. That God, your word says, then the moment you go like that, because most people, what they say is the word is not working. It's not working for them. But it's working for this other person. Mm-mm. 
Somebody else is eating something. Somebody else is listening. Amen. Somebody, so if it did not work, you did not work it. Praise God. You didn't what? God cannot fail. Let's first, let's first be sure of that. He said, let there be light. Light did not have any prior discussion. Should I come? Should I not come? Should I? It was clear. Light came. So God's word is that powerful. Is that effective. That if anything is wrong, it's with you. Hallelujah. So if you try God's word and it seems like there's no results, go back to him so that the missing link, you can get it. Let me give an example. I shared it two weeks ago. The book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 says what? Ask and you shall receive. Have you asked before or that you didn't receive? Well, Abby. Uh-huh. I like, see, it's important. But don't just read the Bible and just, you now preach it and you have history in your life of asking and not receiving and you have not solved it. But see, revelation is progressive. So you see something today, God wants to show you something else tomorrow. Praise God. And I'd explained it before in church. Revelation is this way. If I give you the address to my house and say, ah, brother, you don't come to my house. Hmm? And then you get to the gate. When you call me, what would you say? You say, I'm at your gate. Are you in my house? No, not yet. You're at the gate. So if... I come to the gate and have a conversation with you at, at the gate and you go. You will tell somebody else, I know Mr. Walls' house is not true. It's my gate, you know. <laughs> it's not true. I know his address and I know his gate. Revelation is like that. The first revelation, the time you see that word, ask and you shall be given. God gave you address. You have not entered. You have not what? Entered. So when you step forward again, you get to the person's gate. If I called you in, you come in. That's another level of revelation. You sit in my parlor, we talk. That's another level of interaction with that revelation. I'm, talking, I'm telling you about the gradients of faith. So that when you receive a word from God, don't just do it and say it didn't work. You have to be persistent. If you are sure that God gave you that word, you go back to him and say, God, how? Do you know the story of the children of Israel? God said, you will win. They went. They were defeated. What did they do? They went back to God. They went again. They were defeated. The third time, God now gave them strategy. <laughs> and that's how revelation is. So, you have entered my parlor. You will say, you know Mr. Walls' house. You have not entered my kitchen. So, the only thing you can describe about that revelation is gates. Hello. The TV. See, let me tell you the truth. Where God wants you to get to is not a place where or John can get to in my house. The only person that can get there is my wife. It's our room. So when it comes to the level, the, the, the place of revelation, the room is the place of transfer. The room is the place where the word becomes flesh. It's not at the gate. Amen. The room is what produced Larry Ife Amirabel. Uh. There is no result outside the room. There's no result. There's no result there. You will know it, you'll be able to quote it, but there will be no result. And that thing breaks forth as you encounter barriers. Most people encounter it and say it's not working. They back off. They go back to their positive thinking books. Say, ah. So when they pray, they can't even fully trust God because they've not solved what was on ground. It happened to Mary and Martha. They don't know that for every time it looks like there's a delay, there's a barrier, it's because God wants to show you another side of him. So their faith journey has a dent that they did not go back to God to say, God, this car, a car that is dented, can it move? It can move. But it's dented. 
it's not as fine as it's supposed to be based on the manufacturer's design. Are you getting what I'm saying? So a person can have dent in their feet because of an issue that they didn't resolve. Something they prayed for that didn't happen. They don't have answers in that area. It happened to Miriam Mata. They had called Jesus. See, if you understand what was really happening to Miriam Mata, you will understand the dynamics of faith. They called Jesus. Jesus was not just the Jesus everybody knew. This Jesus was the friend of Lazarus, was their friend. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not like um, somebody that is far. They sent him a message. Come, your friend is sick. Then Jesus stays extra days. He does not show up. As far as we are concerned, God is not interested in meeting that need. Are we? He didn't know. As far as they were concerned, to all they knew about Jesus is that he is the healer. So when he showed up on the scene and he was telling them, he told them, he said, I'm the resurrection and the life. What was their response? And we will all meet at the final day. Hallelujah. We will all do what? Meet. We will all, there will be the resurrection of the dead. Uh, you know, sweet by and by. Mary and Martha didn't know Jesus as the one who could raise the dead. What am I saying? That thing that looks like a delay in your life, that you're saying, God, why is it taking time? There's a side of God that he wants to show you that you didn't know before. If we didn't read the story of Abraham, we won't know that it's possible for a man to give birth at 100. <laughs> so, God may be using you as a specimen of his mercy, as a pointer to people that it is possible. But you, you are sulking and say, God, where are you? Where are you? And he's saying, I'm making you special. So that others can look at your testimony. And if they have been saying it's not possible, you become the representation of the possibility of that thing. It's a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith. It's a journey of faith. Praise God. And then Jesus got in front of Lazarus' tomb. Lazarus comfort. And Mary and Martha saw a side of Jesus they never knew. The people saw a side of Jesus that they never knew. So let's go back to the story of the sons of Sceva. Mouth faith. No heart fit. So when you are praying, whose revelation are you using to pray? What pastor preached is just the address. See, I cannot preach what will take you to the bedroom. That's something that you have to get. Are you getting what I'm saying? I can give you the address. That's my job. So the forging of that revelation is between you and God. So no matter what happens in this meeting today, and we are all excited, say, wow, word, Rema, I've received it. No, 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 you got the address. So there's something that you now have to do. Because certain things will play out in the week to test that word. They say, I've received it. Ah, then you dance and you don't dance, just we're excited. But after that excitement, that initial joy, which is important, you don't forget, never forget that you have received it. Because there are many things that will happen this week that will tell you that you have not received it. The parable of the four soils. What did the first one do? The first one fell on the wayside. That wayside is the first, that the devil came to quickly, pay, which means that that's not your portion, Amen. It means that some people will hear the word as they come out of the door, everything that they've heard is gone. When they get to me, they ask you, so how, how was church powerful? What did the pastor preach? M, 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 M. Ah, I will have to listen to that sermon again. What happened was the devil came to pick it out. Let me tell you, the fight of the enemy is not over you. What is precious is the word. If he takes the word out, you are dust. So if the enemy is fighting anything, it's to just make sure that you don't incubate that seed that you have bought it. Hallelujah. So your job is to journey to the room where things happen. And we do that by prayer. By taking that word again, speaking it, speaking it, speaking it, speaking it. When you have to treat your faith like a seed. Praise God. 
So those guys, they tried to cast out demons. They didn't come out. Even though they used the name of Jesus. Did you know that they, they, they used the name of Jesus? But they didn't use the name of Jesus that they had the revelation of. They were trying to build something on the revelation of Paul. Or on the results of Paul. But even the devil knew. So the devil tempted and said, come. And woes them nicely. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's just, let's just move on. Something has happened to Paul too. Do you remember the conversion of Paul? That's why your faith, faith has to be original. Faith has to be authentic. You can't, you can't do copy and paste. So my friend said, ah, she has been, she has, I've been praying at 12 a.m. And she, ah, and she came to tell you the kind of miracles I've been seeing since we started praying at 12 a.m. You know, we hear all, we hear all these things. Uh, you are laughing because you know it. You, you will hear it. Someone say, ah, wake up 12, 12 a.m. Pray to one. That time of the day mm, is when the evil people are doing things. So which time of the day are they not doing things? Hmm? It is when men slept, so you should not sleep again. That's misinterpretation of scripture. The spiritual sleeping that scripture is talking about. Not physical sleep. Uh, we hear these things, don't we? Hey, hey now. That prayer at 12 is the is the you know is the deal, have you? Is the deal that you have you have you held yourself and you stayed awake when others were asleep. Where in the Bible states that that's the yastic of answered prayers? Think about it. Where in the Bible? If you tell me that you're praying at 12 because they will be quiet at that time and you will not be disturbed, makes more sense. Or if you tell me that God instructed you particularly to pray at 12, it makes sense. But the moment you make it a doctrine, then we have an issue like the brazen serpent that was put up. That worked for a period of time. Praise God. Your faith has to be authentic. And when I say authentic, it's not that, oh, you now do something that is ex extremely different from every other person. Ah, that pastor said, uh, faith has to be authentic. Oh. So when God tells you something that even looks like what somebody else did, you now say, no, 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 no. God, you have to tell me something new that has never happened before. Mm -mm. That's not what it means. It, it, what it means for your faith to be authentic is that you heard something. Not that you are copying something. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example of what I mean. I heard that Archbishop was praying. No, no, no. They brought, a, they brought somebody who they've been trying to cast out devils from her, from her. Some of the pastors have been trying and it didn't work. So they brought her to act bishop and he was drinking water. And he said, so what's the problem? He said, he just put the water on her. And that was it. Hmm? So I heard that. I'm just trying to tell you that God can give you a similar instruction, but you have to hear it. That it's not because you, you heard that he did it. So you to know anybody who bring me water, let me drink small. <laughs> No. So let me tell you what, what, what might happen to me. My mom's late friend, she said she was having pain in her leg. I was eating. And there was water beside me. And in a moment, I heard in my spirit, give her the water that you are drinking from. Tell her to pour it on her leg. And she did. The pain left. I heard though. I've not tried it again. Because I didn't, I've not heard anything like that. Are you getting what I'm saying? But in hearing that, I also remember that God gave Archbishop that kind of instruction. Are you, or his faith was stirred up in that direction. But I have not done it again. Or have you seen me tell, pour water on anybody's leg for healing? I have not heard that instruction. There are different instructions. In short, there was a day in, when I was pastoring Covenant Connect, God gave me instructions that people who had stomach ache, stomach pain, I should give them I had water, give them water, and they should sit down where I was sitting. There was a lady, she came, she drank, sat down, the stomach ache left. Instruction. If that chair is not the matter, that water is not the matter, it was the instruction. 
I believe strongly that what happened to most people was that they made an instruction, a doctrine. So because God told you to light seven candles representing seven things and you pray at 12, it now became a movement of seven candles. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm saying this thing because one of my jobs is to make sure that people don't, by the help of the Spirit, people don't veer off to the edges of this road called faith. Because a lot of people are doing strange things, though, that they did not hear from God, that they read from a book. Amen. Ah, hallelujah. So something happened to Paul in Acts 22, verse 7 to 9. Acts 22, verse 7 to 9. I believe that you are being blessed. Hallelujah. Acts 22 verse 7 to 9. I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Who are you, Lord? I asked. The voice replied, I am Jesus of Nazareth, the one you are persecuting. Then verse 9 is where I'm going. It says, the people with me saw the light but didn't understand what the voice said to me. Which means that in a meeting, God, everybody saw the light. The pastor preached. But somebody else heard something. The other people that were with saw, did not hear. They saw the light. But they didn't hear what God told him. So it means that the benefit of what God told him was attached to him, not with the other people who didn't hear. He was the only one who became blind, who God sent to Ananias and all that, and all that experience and the revelation. So, your salvation has to be taken personally. Amen. Has to be taken what? Personally. See, so if God has given your friend a psalm and you've been using it, I just said, let me share it with you. You can start from there. It's not a, it's not a bad thing. You, 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 you get what I'm saying? But you are starting from there so that you can get your own word. Testimonies don't give you faith. They give you hope. Tes testimonies don't do what? They give you hope. And, and let me explain it this way. If Sarah comes to me, let's say I'm an investor. Hmm? And she comes to me and she's needing, let's say, five million for our business and she comes and says this is my business proposal this is my plan this is this, this is this is that this is that and then i say okay sarah come come on tuesday i'll give you the five million and she comes to my office and i give her the five million hmm? when i told her come on monday i mean she received faith because I said, come on Monday. So, do you know what Sarah is going to do? Especially if she feels like I'm a credible person, I have integrity, that I'm going to do what I said I would do. She will start to make plans based on the 5 million she has not received. <laughs> based on the 5 million that has not yet entered her account. She will start to price certain things. She will, price, she will price certain things and she says the 5 million is coming. So this place that we're going to use, we're going to put the thing in here. We're going to put this here. She starts to, the money is not yet in her. I'm, I'm describing faith for you. That she comes on Monday, I give her the 5 million. But before she saw the manifestation, she was living in the reality of it. She lived in the reality of it. She Went to the market, started pricing. This thing that we're going to use, this thing that we're going to use, you know, all these materials. She did all of that. Then, on Monday, she really got the manifestation. So, let's say she comes to church. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This was what God did for me. And, 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 and you think that what you received was hope. So, you say, ah, Mr. Was is benevolent to me to have a business deal that I need to fund. I need 3M. It's not even up to what she asked for, Sarah asked for. So, and then, because you heard what Sarah said, you to now go and start pricing things. We have not had any meeting. 
We have not had any meeting. But because Sarah came and said, ah, it was five million. And Mr. Woz was able to give me the five million. And all that is, ah, man. Mr. Woz is an investor. He will be interested in my business and he will be able to give me three million. So throughout this week, we are just pricing things. We've not had a meeting. So Sarah's testimony did not convey faith to you. It conveyed hope that paraventure I can have his audience. Are you getting what I'm saying? Especially if she describes that, oh, it's easy, just send him a mail, he's going to respond, or come to his office and just book an appointment, it's easy. That, you know, you understand? She describes all that. It will give you hope that if you come. So, if, so at that initial point, if you start to make preparation based on Sarah's testimony, you're not in faith. Oh. You are more in assumption than any other thing. And you can strongly believe that thing. And after one year, you'll be offended at God. Because what we usually do is the God that did it for Sarah is doing it for me. It's doing it for me. It's doing it for me. It's doing it for me. God has not told you anything. So until we book an appointment, we see and we talk. And I say, this is the three million. Or I tell you, come on Friday. The moment I give that word, Say, come on Friday. Then, that's when you received faith. Before then, it was hope you had. That's why faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance was not yet there. You had hope. Most of the time, before we prayed, before we got the word, what we had was hope. When the word comes, bam, you have faith because God has spoken. You have seen a word that tells you that that thing is your own. Then you now join. You see, the journey of faith now begins. Which is the distance between when you receive a word and manifestation. There are things you are supposed to do inside. Praise God. Praise God. And that's where most people usually lose strength. Hallelujah. I have a few, few more minutes. We'll, we'll, we'll dig deep. I, I, I put here, I said... It's key to note that two notes, no two note bills have the same serial number. So my expression of faith is going to be different from yours. It's going to be different. We will hear the same word, but the manifestation, the way God is going to do it might be different. Praise God. So you have to... I, I, I really want to emphasize it so that we are, we are authentic and original. In our faith, I actually wanted to print t-shirts. I would just put um, authentic faith. You know, we are what original. You are not going into tech because they say tech is the in thing. You know, that's how some of my younger friends are now. Ah, it's coding now. It's coding now. It's software development. So that's what everybody is doing. And God will be telling you with all your certificates, go and start selling pure water. Uh, and you'll be saying what's, what's pure water selling what does it have to do with my destiny and it was the same way they said how can anything good come out of Nazareth the way of the spirit is not the same way with, with, with the flesh he said this is what's working now this is what's working you, you waste your energy for another one year then you change business you say this was working now. You enter into it. You waste your energy for another one year. Then you change business. I've seen a lot of young people change for more. So what are you doing now? Ah, that one did not. I just moved on. Why? What happened? You did not secure God's voice in the first place. Either that or God used it as a transition to where you are going so that your brain can be correct. You know, sometimes God will allow you to make mistakes. Uh, yes. Yeah, He will allow you to make some mistakes. So that when you make that mistake, it's like the circumcision that has been circumcised. Now, the covenant is working from that place. <laughs> you make some mistakes, you look at it. When you see that thing from afar, you recognize it. You, you, be, you become the testimony to others. Say, don't try it. <laughs> Say, don't go that way. God has used you as an example. 
Not in a bad way, but it's training you. Amen. Praise God. So, the two sides of faith, heart and what? Mouth. Heart and mouth. Let's, let's move forward from them. I, I, I put you, I said, the Red Sea parted for the children of Israel, but the Egyptians tried to join the party. You know they tried to join the party. Who heard the word? Moses. And he parted for them. And they were walking on dry land. And the Egyptians too assumed that they would be able to walk on dry land. So you heard the person. The person heard that they should go into the business. You too, you feel like, ah, my, my friend is doing very well. I will go into the business. So you entered it, you drowned. Because it was your friend I heard. Hallelujah. It was not you. A lot of people are under peer pressure. Following, the, Let me tell you what happened to me when I was in SS1. I had friends. When I entered SS1, I did music as a subject. A lot of my, some of my friends followed me. You know, music is, you know, you just like me. Everybody likes me. Everybody, you want to sing or play one instrument. They followed me. After first time, everybody left. But initially, they what? They followed. I was the only music student by, by SS3. I did YK alone in the all, big all. <laughs> <as alone. laughs> if you are waiting for supporters to do what God has called you to do, you will miss it. I could have, I could have felt, why am I the only one? I was the only one. In short, my teacher had a job because I was a student. I, I was the only one. So, when God couldn't look for friends to validate that vision, mm -mm. start. Anybody who is not in support, don't, don't dislike them. They just don't understand. They were not the ones that God spoke to. Praise God. The Egyptians tried. They followed. God waited for them to reach the middle. <laughs> Nobody you are talked to. <laughs> Drowned them. Some people say God cannot kill. God killed them. He killed them. He did. He did. He's the one who makes a life and yes, he's God. Mm. It's not just the giver of life, he can take it too. Let's respect him more. Praise God. So principles can be learned from and applied in the context of your situations, but not the direct actions taken by people in their own application of the principle without hearing what they heard. I'm stressing you having to hear your word. You have, you have to hear. There are so many things that at the earlier times of our marriage, I'll suggest to my wife, I think you should do this. But I didn't push because I knew she had to hear some of those things she's doing now. Because at a point, she finally by herself heard those things. Praise God. But most people want to force people. People have wheels and you have to allow people to come to the point where they hear for themselves. If somebody gives you a prophecy, prophecy that does not resonate with you, put it aside first. Put it what? Aside. Until you, you, you follow. Praise God. So, don't joke with your words. As I, as I round off today, don't joke with your words. When you believe something, don't just say things anyhow. You don't recognize jokes in the spirit realm, actually. Mm, don't just say things anyhow. Say things like after after every three three months, I just used to have malaria. It's you have friends that say those things now. Say this kind of headache when it comes like this. I just ah, and they'll be saying it with panache, you know. <laughs> and so, when I start feeling that waist pain, ah. I know that I have to just go and see the pharmacist. I just, I just know. It's my thing. <laughs> Everybody will have their thing. What you say is your thing, is your thing. What you say is yours, is yours. My, my medication. Who said it's your medication? It's medication. It's not my medication. Say this is this just headache, my headache. It's not your, who gave you? You say you own it. I feel headache is not the same thing as I have headache. They are two different things. Hmm? You are not broke. 
you don't have money in your account yet. Hmm. Yet. You have to learn to phrase your words. If you don't know what to say, you keep quiet and gather wisdom on what to say. So that money that you have been waiting for, did you get? I've not gotten it yet. But the Lord shall supply all my needs according to Jesus. Don't just say, I have gotten it. Like, you know, with the way you used to say, I've gotten it in Jesus' name. Mm-mm. I have not gotten it yet. But I know that the Lord shall supply or has supplied all my needs. So that if you can't say, I've gotten it in the front of the person who wants to give you money. <laughs> you get in front of the doctor and say, what's wrong with you? By stripes, I was ill. No, that's not what the question he asked you. Um, you say how you feel. Praise God. How you what? Feel, and feelings don't last. Mm. They're fickle. You just, it will just pass. How do you feel? I'm feeling pain in my leg. Not I have pain in my leg. I have is, is, is a word that talks about ownership, possession. I have and I feel they are two different things. Your words, that's how you release faith. That's how you release faith. Next week, we'll get to the third part. You know, I said there are, there are, there are three. We want, just want to treat to your mouth and your heart. Believe first. Then you say. Believe first. Then you say. Please bow your heads and let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for your word. And I ask that it will produce. What I have given them is address. Father, I ask that everyone will further the journey to get to that place where they incubate your word and give birth. Where they incubate your word and give birth to that which you have spoken to them. That the things that were not possible will become possible as a result of the release of their faith. They will easily receive from you answers like never before. 